Hello everyone, my name is Clancy Sandro. Welcome to the clan. And so without further ado, let's get into this video. But before we get into the video, smash me the like button, guys. It's working. We are growing because y'all keep smashing the like button. I do see it in every video that I post that you guys we all finally get it that if I click the like button, this video is going to get pushed to more video. And when people discover the video, they'll be like, where have you been all my life? And then they stop subscribing and then they come and tell me in the comment section, oh my goodness, where have you been? The question is, where have you been? We've been here for a while now and we've been following the Senzo Mewa murder trial since it began. I'm not quite sure when and I want to warmly welcome each and every one of you. We are now going all already at 10.7. 10,700 of you guys are clicking the subscribe button. If you are watching and not subscribed yet, should I come for you? Should I come for you with this pencil? Because you know when you do this, yeah, don't make me do that. Anyways, guys, let's go to the North Alton High Court where there was some great turn of events. And I would say, okay, no, let me reserve my thoughts towards the end of the video because I got asked a question that got me going down the rabbit hole and like, let's find out what exactly this is and what is happening and what's going to happen from here on. And uh, you'll be very glad to hear that everything is still quite in order. However, let's get to the turn of events today. So, Advocate Ramos Sipile, of course, Advocate Boloi, because this is his case, he needs to introduce it every time the court sits. And then Advocate uh, Ramos Sipile stood up and basically introduced a whole advocate that is going to take over from here. In my mind, I'm like, oh, what's going on? But anyways, we'll talk about it later because it's your fault. I'm blaming some of y'all because you know this information you never told me. But anyways, let's get the. He then placed it on record that Advocate Ngome Zulu is going to start taking over from here on in representing accused number one and accused number two. And of course, Advocate um, Ngome Zulu did then put himself on record that he is now the advocate that is going to take over from uh, uh, from Ramosipili and representing uh, accused number one and accused number two. Again, I'm going to talk about this towards the end of the video, how all this is happening and what's the confusion about. And I will try my level best in a nutshell to clear the confusion that I am seeing on my Instagram DM. If you're not following me on Instagram, I am Clancy's underscore Dumagute, all small caps. You don't go big, just all small caps, Clancy's underscore Dumagute. That is where I'm mostly found when you want to interact with me on a one-on-one -on -one level. Or maybe you have something you want to add onto this wonderful family. Yes, you go to my Instagram DM and that is where you will find me. So now let's get into what happened today. So Advocate Baloye then stood up and said he had no problem with this new arrangement because they already, in fact, before I even got this far, the court's supposed to start at 10 a.m., but today it started an hour 35 minutes late, or was it 11? Yeah, it started around half past 11-ish or something like that this morning. And then the questions that I everybody was asking, oh my goodness, is Rata uh, being uh, recused? Oh my goodness, this, oh my goodness, that. There were even rumors that a new judge is going to be sitting in. And in my mind, I'm like, there can't be just a new judge that comes and sit without either the deputy judge president or the judge president having made an announcement to the public of South Africa that they are changing the judge. In my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, what if this was my own speculation? I was like, what if Advocate Tim Nisi, after he, the way he was treated on Friday, launched an application against uh, the Rata? And then he was like, uh, I'm not quite sure what application that would have been, either to recuse himself or he get disciplined one way or the other by the GSC or something. I don't know. But I thought maybe that's the reason why court was taking way too long to begin with. But anyways, eventually they started and that is when uh, what happened, that turn of event with accused number one and accused number two gaining themselves an advocate. And I was like, 
okay again i will talk about this towards the end of the video because y'all how can you do this to me how can you do this to me i'm like there's nothing wrong with my revelation about what i think happened but anyways i was still surprised let me leave it like that so Advocate Mgome Zulu then stood up and said the following. I am going to be reading a lot in this video because I do not want to read uh, these people or say something out of context. So I just want to say as they said it in verbatim. So I wrote what they said. And this is what Advocate Mgome Zulu said when he stood up. As of tomorrow, as arranged in the in the relation to evidence of the magistrate, I was going to bring an application for the recalling of Colonel Mboto, who has already testified on Friday together with Constable Munareng. On the instructions that I got from accused number one, I humbly request the court that I need to consult with both accused number one and two and request the honorable court to make an order that I be given some few hours to consult with accused number one and accused number two. Which I thought it was fair. And then Advocate Maloye took to the floor basically to confirm what Advocate Gomez Zulu said. And he said, we indicated to our colleagues that we are not going to object to the request. However, proceed. However, we need to proceed with evidence to be led tomorrow. And so the judge then asked Advocate Baloyi when was he planning to recall uh, Colonel Mboto as well as Constable Munareng. Then Advocate Baloyi told the judge that they will have to be asked to be on standby from tomorrow. Then it was the judge's turn whom I thought, oh my goodness, this is how a judge supposed to behave like neutral unbiased, untemperamental, doesn't take sides, a judge that behaves like a judge. I was quite pleasantly surprised today. I don't know if uh, Advocate Ngome Zulu came with a different vibe that got that court a little bit calm. And I was like, this is how I think a court should look like and feel like. And then when you talk about the judge, you must think about what you are going to say carefully because that is a judge that is presiding over a fair matter. You and I already know how we feel at the clan regarding this judge because we still believe that he's presiding over an unfair trial. We stand on that ground, we are unmoved or shaken from it. So after the judge has heard everything from both sides, the new advocate for accused number one and two, as well as from Baloy, then he needed to make some remarks before he made an order, which I think what I'm going to be reading from uh, Judge Rada, it is an order and it goes thus follow. So he says, it is an animal. Uh, why can't I always pronounce this word animal, animal? In animal, in animal, judge. Okay, I'll try again. This time I will break it into syllables. It is amenable to the application for postponement and for the instructions to advocate Ngome Zulu in respect to accused number one and two. Our constitution allows a litigant at any stage of the proceedings to augment change or fire legal representation. So the instructions regarding advocate Mgomezulu are acceded to as the accused enjoys an absolute and unlimited right in terms of the constitution to choose a legal representative of his choice. So this court makes an order that Colonel Mboto and Constable Munareng should be recalled. The arrangements will be made with the prosecutor, Mr. Baloy, together with Mr. Ramosipili and Mr. Mgomezulu when that eventuality should, or when this eventuality should occur. The court in respect of the proceedings which are enduring from today up until whenever Mr. Mnisi is again available. I will be failing in my duty. 
If I do not advise accused number three that this court has made an order according to section 159 of the Criminal Procedure Act that the proceedings regarding this court should proceed in the absence of advocate Nisi on the proviso that all the evidence that is led beginning from today that evidence is captured on record will be made available to Mr. Mnisi so that he can consult his client accused number three. And this is made according to the constitution, namely an accused person should face their accusers, meaning the witnesses who testify here. So, so that you do not suffer any prejudice. Regarding the fact that if your advocate is not here, then ukwebela esageni. I'm not quite sure what that idiom means. I know I'm Zulu, but I didn't do Zulu like that. If anybody knows what this idiom means, please comment in the comment section and let us know what ukwebela esageni means. I know ukalelembelekweni what it means, but I don't know what this one means. And our people may not understand why this is happening. Um... Judge, just so you know or confirm our position here at the clan, we don't know what you're doing. We don't know why this trial is even going on when the, clearly the state no longer has a case. We don't know what's happening, actually. But the law allows it, not me. The law allows it in this case of an emergency like pertaining to Mr. Mnisi, that he's involved in parted matter, according to him, which commenced before this trial, and then has enjoined to continue and finalize it. There should be no perceptible, plausible prejudice. Which you already the accused are experiencing with this judge, by the way, which must not be suffered by the accused number three. So all the evidence will be replayed in the presence of Mr. Mnisi, and if he so desires, he can cross-examine and pursue any aspects of which transpired where he was not present in court. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, wow, this judge sounded so much like how a judge should sound like, how a judge should behave. You know, if this judge was behaving from the start, I'd be like, yeah, great job, judge. I like that. But this judge, I still think is compromised. This judge is still compromised according to my opinion. And I'm entitled to, to that opinion because, woo, he has put us through it. On Friday in particular, for me, it almost broke the camel's back. And today he is well behaved, guys. What's happening? I'm not quite sure if Advocate Mgomezul came with a different energy, different vibe. Guys, come a little bit closer. Let's, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Didn't you get the same vibe of Mgomezulu that you get from Advocate Baloi? Or it's just me again. I I'm hallucinating. Because Advocate Mgomezulu reminded me so much of Advocate Baloi. I'm like, if this is what I am saying, but wow, I was a little bit like, okay, this is going to be interesting. I cannot wait for tomorrow, to be honest with you. After I saw what I saw in the North Hattin High Court today, in the sense of murder trial, I was like, Advocate Baloye and Advocate um, Gomez Zulu, something is going to be, it's going to be fireworks from what they are both calm, they both speak at the mellow tone. Ooh, we'll see. We'll see. I hope he's as sneaky as Advocate Baloy. Again, I'm kidding. No, it's a joke. You know, when you tell the truth and then you lead towards the truth, the truth always prevails in the end. Period. So this is when the judge advised accused number three to take notes from tomorrow or even from today so that he can write down pointers of everything that might affect him during the trial within a trial, maybe where his name is called or mentioned, referred to, or whatever the case might be, he should write all those things so that when he consults with his lawyer, which is Advocate Mnisi, he's able to give him uh, appropriate instructions. Again, I thought that was so lovely of the judge. I was like, 
If you can be like this judge, trust and believe me, you can turn your reputation around. Maybe it's too late for that. So Advocate Baloyi then took to the floor and then he was basically answering to the judge who wanted to know who is his next witness. And he said the next witness is a Miss Cronier who will take the stand tomorrow. Remember, uh, Colonel Mboto as well as Constable Munareng will be on standby from tomorrow so i suspect that this particular cronier from what i heard i don't know how true this is she was a police officer who became a magistrate or something of that nature i don't know i could be wrong please do comment down below if i am wrong or maybe i'm jumping the gun a little bit maybe a magistrate is yet to come i don't know but that is what people are telling me they're like oh she used to be a cop herself so maybe she was the arresting officer. I do not know. And I saw other people getting a little bit excited because she's a white lady. I don't understand this race thing when it comes to the court of law that white people are more honest than black people are. I was like, what are you guys talking about? If you know you are lying, irrespective of your race, you are a liar. If you tell the truth, irrespective of your race, you are telling the truth. Period. It's got nothing to do with, oh, the judge must be white. Oh, let's put a white judge. What if the white judge just sees black people the same way? It's like, I know, okay, you are... And then what are you going to say? You're going to turn around and accuse him of being a racist, right? No, guys, come on. I, I think that one... Uh, let's, let's just cast that one aside. The race does not play any role in the court of law. It's the law and the facts that plays a major role in court. It's just that we are given a judge who is prejudiced. And I'm not talking the legal prejudicism. I'm talking about the discrimination type of prejudice, uh, prejudice, where when you don't like a particular type of persons, you prejudice against them. You do not give them any fairness whatsoever because you have it in your head that they are the scumbags of the earth. He is not supposed to look at them at this point regarding their previous convictions. But what he needs to look at them as people who are innocent until proven guilty. And he's failing to do that as a judge. And therefore failing to be a neutral as well as a fair judge in this trial. That, how, that is how he needs to look at them. But he's already prejudicing them. So after Advocate Baloyi introduced his next uh, witness tomorrow, this is when the judge ordered the head of security, I think of the correctional services that brings accused number one and two to court, that he should give Advocate Ngome Zulu the time he needs uh, to consult with his clients. Of course, they need to be taken back to prison at half past three. And of course, the head of security said he has no problem with that. Indeed, at half past three, they will be transported back to Hosi Mampuru prison. I didn't know that that's where they were staying. But anyways, that's where they are staying. Nabataba bastard. And so this is when the court adjourned until tomorrow at 10 a.m. We all know they never start at 10 a.m. I don't know why. I don't know why this judge... He's so ill-disciplined when it comes to the time. So let me address the question that I was asked in my Instagram DM. If you are not following me, uh, you are missing out a lot, guys. You are missing out a lot on my Instagram. Even though that Instagram, I do silly things. If you want to see my funny part or the funny side of me, that is where you should go. But I use the DM to communicate with yourselves. If you have questions or maybe you want my thoughts on something or feelings on, on something, then I'm able then to communicate with you. I may not respond to you the same day or the next day or the other day because that uh, DM is quite full, but I will respond to you eventually and I will engage you in a conversation as well. All right. So then you wanted to know, okay, Advocate Ramosipili. Now let's correct that. This is the way y'all... Y'all, the hell are wrong. When were you planning to tell me that Ramosipili is not an advocate, but he is the attorney of the high court? And there is nothing wrong with being an attorney of the high court because you still appear in the high court. And if you're wondering, what is an attorney of the high court now? Okay, I did the trouble of going down the rabbit hole, as I always do, and find out what is an attorney of the high court. And the rabbit hole told me this. An attorney of the high court can appear in the high court just like advocates. To qualify to appear 
an attorney must have an LLB degree or some other appropriate legal qualifications. Those of some old-fashioned people, which is like the judge, you must have like what you call a BPROC, whatever that is, plus three years experience. By taking further examinations, an attorney may qualify as a conveyancer and or notary public, meaning that they can uh, deal with houses and they also can be commissioners of oath. I think that's what it means. And then now let's deal with Ramosipili. Is he going away from this case? And the answer is no. Now, what you need to understand about an attorney, so you commit a crime or maybe yeah, you commit a crime and your crime is going to end up in the high court and then you go to a lawyer. The lawyer is called an attorney and then you consult with your attorney and then because of the, the direction that your case is going to go, which is going to end up in the high court, then the attorney, your attorney, will go and hire an advocate or appoint an advocate who's going to represent you in the high court. And then your attorney then becomes an instructing attorney. Are we together? So what had happened in the court today, in the North Hunting High Court with Ramasipili, he then appointed Advocate Ngome Zulu. Now, appointing Advocate Ngome Zulu, this means that he is now the instructing attorney. So now the person that we're going to be seeing in the forefront for accused number one and two is Advocate Ngome Zulu. And Advocate, um, and you see now, and then Ramosipili is going to be in the shadows of Advocate Ngome Zulu. Meaning that we're no longer going to see uh, uh, um, uh, Ramosipili as much as we used to see him because Ngome Zulu is the one that's going to be leading everything from this point on. And then when you hear Advocate Ngome Zulu say, I'm going to consult, that means he's going to take instructions from the attorney who's going to go to his clients and take instructions from there. I think that's the best I can explain this and debunk the, uh, the confusion that took place. Ramosipili is not going anywhere. He is now an instructing attorney. And then I got a question as well as how do I feel about what uh, Ramosipili did? And then guys, me, I give credit where credit is due. I believe Ramosipili did a sterling job with this trial thus far. I'm happy with him. I don't want to lie. However, he does have a very respectful manner or demeanor, a demeanor about the judge. And then I feel like his respect for the judge, maybe because he is the attorney of the high court, not the, uh, the advocate who can actually a little bit challenge the judge. Maybe that is why he felt, you know what, I am a little bit short here. And can you imagine... Can you imagine what it took for him to admit to himself that mm -mm, this case, or at least the case, the my, uh, my clients, they deserve an advocate, somebody who is going to be able to talk back to the judge if needs be. Let me uh, appoint an advocate. You know when you realize that because Friday for me, I felt that uh, Ramosipili had a breaking point. And the way he was representing his uh, his clients, it was almost as if he had given up. And then I did see some comments as well. People say, oh my goodness, uh, Ramosipili has just given up on his clients because he's supposed to have asked hardcore questions. The handcuffs being too tight and uh, the, the pre-questions that uh, this so-called uh, justice of the peace should have done and uh, the process itself that why didn't you stop the moment that uh the, the suspect asked you to loosen the handcuffs and then you saw that his hands were swollen because of the handcuffs being too tight and then you take this individual to a doctor to ensure that they are not going to out of the blue develop strokes or even a heart attack or something because of blood being uh, constrained from moving in his body. But no, he continued. He continued with the so-called confession. And the questions that Ramosipili should have also asked was about the moment you heard accused number one say, 
I have an attorney or legal representation and his name is Nkuna. Why didn't you stop and call the, his lawyer and let the lawyer know that your client is here and then you wait for his lawyer to come before he makes a confession? Those are very pertinent questions that Ramosipili should have asked. He, Ramosipili should have also asked about the interrogation room itself. What equipment is the interrogation room equipped with to ensure that the confession, admission, writing of statements and interrogations are indeed credible when they end up in court? All those questions I felt were important to ask, but uh, Ramosipili did not ask those questions. Maybe that's when he realized that, you know what, I'm not going to prejudice my clients by continuing to defend them. Let me rather go and appoint an, uh, an advocate. And here we are today. So those are my thoughts regarding this. If I also got a question about um, Gomez Zulu, what do I think of him? I said, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to make any comments uh, at this moment. I'm just going to watch how he takes the defense going forward. He looks like somebody who's well experienced as an advocate. I don't know how many cases is lost. I, mean, I don't know how many cases he has won, but I'm get, putting my faith in him and let's see how he takes this going forward. Those are just my thoughts. But then again, you guys, how can you do me like that? He didn't tell me that Ramosipili is not an advocate, but an uh, attorney of the high court. Anyways, that is that that I have to say in this video. If you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel. Oh my goodness, you guys are super thanking the channel in your numbers. Woo! I love it for us. And thank you guys so, so, so much for that. I highly appreciate you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what do you think or what did you think about the proceedings that took place today at the Noha Deng High Court in the Senzo Mewa murder trial. Also, share this video far and wide. Don't forget to like other YouTubers' videos and also subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time with a new video. Goodbye.